Four or five from three. Yeah, you knew without AD and, you know, look, he's been trending ever since the Milwaukee game. I actually think LeBron is right now maybe leading the league for MVP. I think he has that on his mind uh, because he's coming out against a team that they should beat, Rob, and he's uh, no let up. You know the best thing about him, though, is every year he does something special. Now he's shooting the three ball at a high clip. This dude just always changing his game to make him better and the team better. Yeah, look at this, Rob. First half of the last three games, he's the third Laker over the last 25 seasons, scored 20-plus points in the first half in all three straight games. <laughs> Shaq and Kobe. Pretty good company. Oh, that's great company. You know, those guys put in work, and they probably did that together. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Same night. Same night. <laughs> uh, James D has eight points in eight minutes off the bench. The Lakers lead the Pistons 58-56. Jack in the Box halftime report coming back after the break. Contavious Caldwell Pope is back in Motown. The Lakers' fifth game in this seven-game road trip takes them to Detroit. LeBron James has scored 80 points combined in the last two games. A win tonight, and the Lakers guarantee themselves a winning trip. But they will have to do it a little short-handed. The Lakers will try to get their first win in the new home of the Pistons, Little Caesars Arena. The Lakers haven't won in Detroit since December of 2014. Tip-off here on Spectrum Sportsnet is at 5 o'clock. As we say hello and welcome to Access Sportsnet Lakers, brought to you by your Southern California Toyota dealers. I'm Allie Clifton, joined by the Hall of Famer, big game, James Worthy, seven-time champ, big shot, Robert Ori. We've got Mike Bresnahan, Mike Trudell. Geeter will join us here shortly. Um, we also have a fun, some goodness, if you will, for this show coming up later. You know exactly what I'm talking about. It's kind of a surprise for you. A little TBT for this Thursday. You nervous? <laughs> yeah, because uh, a surprise, you said it's going to be a surprise. <laughs> he looking around like something gonna drop out the sky. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's all good. for it's, it's good. All you. Yes, good fun for you. Let's do it. Yeah, that I'm means ready. you all need to stick around. Let's we'll do get to that in a moment. That's what you call it, a TV tease. Some news for tonight's game, however, the Lakers announced that Anthony Davis will miss tonight's game with a right quad contusion. AD scored 23 points last night against Philly. This will be the third game that AD has missed on the season. In last night's loss, Anthony Davis and LeBron did most of the heavy lifting. They combined for 57 points, shot 51% from the field. The rest of the team struggled a bit. After the game, LBJ discussed what could have been better. No, we had cutters to two, and we missed three shots. When Mark had an in and out, Kenny had one. You know that went in and out. I had a uh, short baseline jumper that I missed, and um, I think me and uh, well, I don't think I know me and Bron missed four straight free throws down the stretch. Um, I was terrible from the line tonight, five for ten. Um, and so, I mean, that's, that's really it. I mean, Joel got to the line early um, in the first quarter. Um, we gave him a 34 point quarter, first quarter. Um, it kind of you know slowed him down a little bit. You know, for the next three, but um, they had 21 points in a, in a fast break um, category. And um, but other than that, I think for the most part, the game was, was pretty even. And, um, you know, we gave ourselves a chance to win the game. Uh, you know, just needed one stop. You know, Tobias made a tough shot. And uh, when the team is nine and that was, well, it was nine and one at home. Um, Undefeated when Joel plays, so uh, it was a good matchup for us, and um, again, we feel like we, we could have won. You know, up until that uh, final run there, the shots weren't going down. It's happened a couple times on this trip. Have you seen anything different, or is it just sort of make-miss uh, in the way that you guys are getting shots and then converting to the trip right uh, I mean, I, I think we got some great looks. Um, you know, we play the same way every game. It's not like we change our approach, you know, and, um, you know, our shooters kind of struggle tonight, obviously. Um, you know, we need, you know, to open up the perimeter a lot more, but um, we got some great shots and we just didn't make them. All right, guys, before we get to tonight, let's talk a little last night. We talked about it on the post game show. Rob, you watched the game. We get a little finals preview. I know it's a little early. It's a little early, but you know, if you look at the way these guys are playing and the way Danny Green played, yeah, like them hips <laughs> weren't hurt in this game, you know what I mean? And if you. And Embiid is an MVP caliber player, and he's playing at such a high level. And the way these guys get up and down the floor, and we're not going to talk about the guy who made the, the game with his shot, Tobias Harris, but they have a really good team. I think they got they're going to be coached very well, and it might be. But you know, the game this weekend also might be a Finals preview, so we have to sit and 
wait, it's going to be interesting. It's easy for us to get caught up in the players, but you mentioned in the pregame big game, I mean, you add Doc Rivers then to that whole roster that they've put together uh, with championship experience, and we saw it on full display last night. Yeah, you always wonder, you know, when a team has as much talent as they've had, some players have gone elsewhere, but they've always had some, some really good talent. You wonder why they just can't get over the hump. You bring in, you know, uh, a coach that's been there before, that's won a championship, and you also have guys that have matured a little bit. I mean, if MB stays healthy and continues in this way, uh, they're going to be trouble. He is, a, he is a bona fide scorer. He's hard to deal with. He's strong. He can shoot the three. And then the surrounding players. I mean, I mean Simmons is 6'10". I mean, that's, no, nobody really knows his defensive. You know, he's a great defensive player. Tobias is a scorer. I knew they were going to go to him. So, yeah, this, is, this could be a, a, a prelude. It's kind of early, but they're definitely in the mix. When you think about Brooklyn and Milwaukee, you know, Philadelphia definitely wants to be in that hunt. They're right at the top of the East. Uh, AD, speaking of tonight, he's getting the night off. His last nine games, guys, shooting just 19% from three. Rob, okay to take a night off in the midst of this road trip? I, I think so. Uh, because you have a team in the Detroit Pistons that is not that good. So if you want to take an op uh, opportunity to rest, this would be a good opportunity. And plus, AD is like one of these guys that bangs a lot. And so I... And to me, I can tell when he's hurting because he kind of drifts to the outside and he stays away from the inside. Because when you banged up, you know, if you go inside, that's when you get banged up even more. So I feel like it was kind of a telling tale where his jump is going, where his free throws are going, that his body kind of needed a little rest. And big game, you don't want to take any team in the NBA for granted. But as Rob mentioned, the Pistons with just four wins, you think... You rest AD tonight. That's two full days of rest before you go into Boston uh, and face the, the Celtics on Saturday. And the Lakers made it very clear they would manage the minutes of their two stars uh, and be patient with it. Yeah, sometimes who you play, you know, works right into the formula you need to, to use on a road trip or if you need to, like, rest a player. This is perfect for AD. You know, he's tried his best uh, with the exception of the games he has missed. Uh, they've tried to like lower their minutes, but sometimes a player like him needs, uh, you know, needs to rest. Rob mentioned he takes a lot of punishment down there in the paint. So, yeah, this is a good time for him to take one. So Anthony Davis out tonight with a quad contusion. Leads us into a little Access 360 brought to you by Morongo Casino Resort and Spa. Good times. Good times. Rob, Lakers had some good and some bad down the stretch. We're going to focus on the good 13-0 <laughs> run to get themselves back the into it. Here goes the See, elevator. Rob has to go down. He has to go down on the elevator to get to the wall. Oh, <laughs> uh, you got to go to Rob's wall right here, baby. You know, even though they lost this game, you have some good moments in the game. But right here, you see defense, they, they D and up. And this is down the stretch where you have to play good team. Look at AD. Position right in. You get a help from Caruso. Get a little hand in that. And then off to the races here. You got to give it to AD. Nope. You're going to give it to Caruso because everybody think you go to AD, they Box him out. No box out right there. He flips it over to LeBron. This is the best pass that he might not get credit for. Over to the best shooting three-point guy in the land right there, Caruso, for three points. That's what you want to do. Good defense down. So now here's a position for good offense right here. LeBron just waiting, waiting. Look at the coach mad because he thought he carried, but LeBron picked it up. Now you got one, two, three, four, five guys watching AD shoot, but nobody's boxing out. What do you have to do, James, in the games? You have to box out. The shortest man on the court goes in and tips it out. You can't have that happen. Now you get out here, you're going to pass around. Look, this guy ain't made a three all game, but when it's time to step up, Dennis the minute steps up and knocks down a three. You got to have that here on the inbound play. This is probably the best play of the night. After the timeout, you cannot draw it up any better than this. Look at LeBron, one of the best passes in the game, has it. He's waiting. This is the thing, everybody's spaced out. You got to have spacing in this game. Great pick by Dennis. Look at the curl by AD. Go into the hole. The only thing would have been better than that finger roll if you would have what, James? Stuck it. You got to stick it and make it. You got to put some emphasis on this. So, right there down the stretch, you showed a championship caliber team. They took over when they needed to do, and they had some good moments. They just couldn't finish yeah. down the stretch when they shouldn't have switched that pick and roll at the end mm -hmm. of the game. <laughs> The fact that you go all the way back down is hilarious. The elevator. <laughs> uh, your energy is what we talked about with the Lakers to get back in the game last night. Uh, big game because Geet talked. It just seemed like they were fighting uphill uh, until they were able to muster up that energy late. They could have still won. Yeah, yeah. They, they almost won the game. And, and I think that, you know, there's no excuse for, for losing. But, you know, Rob can attest. Sometimes you're, on the, you're in the middle of that road trip. We talked about this last night. This game four. 
Uh, sometimes you just sluggish, you're traveling, you're in a hotel, you can't go for a walk. Uh, so sometimes you have to overcome that. And sometimes it, come, it shows up in a game sometimes. But I thought their fight to get back, uh, especially Caruso, Shooter down the stretch, uh, some of the plays that they made to, uh, you know, prolong the game and, and keep them right there uh, was nice to see. So, uh, you know, get a little rest, snap back. They don't want to lose two in a row. It's a tough road trip. Rob said it's a long one. Long, long. You know, think about this. I think a lot of people understand they're on a game. They're on a the road for eight games. Yeah. And they're in the middle. Days. And they're playing a really good team who wants to play them. Oh, so yeah. it's hard. You, yeah. you got to be really prepared. Their star. Yeah, they got to be really prepared. So I'm, I'm proud of the way they perform. All right, it's time to get you to Lakers reporter Mike Trudell, who joins us from down the hall. Lakers lost their first road game of the season. Mike, playing Detroit tonight, Lakers have lost four in a row in the Motor City. Yeah, interesting one there, isn't that, Ellie? And the thing about this one, with no Anthony Davis, so on the one hand, it's not ideal, uh, just in the sense that they can't play their best lineups, which they didn't really get to until late in the game in the fourth quarter against Philly, which you guys just described. But it does give Frank Vogel the chance to extend the minutes for guys who have not been able to play enough because they're so deep on the bench. So this is kind of the, the tug of war that they've been having to go through and just getting the, the roster ready, getting the lineups in accordance with each other as they go through the regular season, as opposed to just game planning to win one game. And so for tonight, let's start there with Frank Vogel as to what they can do without Anthony Davis. He's got a, a quad contusion, um, you know, that had some swelling. And, you know, with back to back, we decided to hold him out. Got so uh, in, you've used uh, you've used Morris in the starting lineup against Chicago, and then Kuz played the first game without him. Uh, how do you see just filling into that spot, Frank, and, and what's most important when AD doesn't play for the guys to collectively step up and do? Well, everybody's got to play their game. You know, we're, we're not, you know, the, these guys can't come in and, and try to be Anthony Davis. Um, you know, they just got to impact the game uh, the way they're capable of, whoever fills in. Uh, we're going to start Coos tonight. Um, you know, but everybody, there's a lot of minutes there to go around. You know, we'll see Taylor Horton Tucker more in the lineup. And, um, you know, obviously Keith and Wes and, and, and those guys will, will get uh, more run as well. So, um, but Coos will get to start and, um, you know, look forward to, to seeing what he can do. Frank, back-to-backs, uh, the second game of back to back seemed to be a point of pride last year. I think you guys went 8-0 in those games before the bubble started. Uh, just wondering what that is from a mentality standpoint and how much LeBron, who kind of seemed to take that uh, even personally to an extent, matters in situations like that. Yeah, he's always uh, taken pride in that throughout his career. Um, you know, just, uh, just bring that extra energy on the second night. And, um, you know, I think our guys uh, follow suit. You know, we have a, a, a lot of the younger players that, you know, that I think will benefit from, uh, you know, some added minutes with Anthony being out. And, you know, hopefully our group uh, is mad enough about last night's loss that uh, we bring the necessary energy to get a W tonight. Looking for a little more information on AD and uh, the nature of that, that injury. Was that something that he suffered last night? And then uh, as, as a follow-up, um, you know, he's only played one of your four back-to-backs in both games. And I'm wondering – has that been a part of a longer term strategy or has it just so happened that he, he just hasn't been available for those particular games? Yeah, not part of a long term strategy. He, he just got dinged up, you know, uh, around those games. And uh, this happened, I believe, in the first quarter. I'm not sure exactly what play, um, you know, but he came, uh, you know, he was hobbling for a few possessions. Uh, felt like uh, he banged it, um, you know, and then just played through the pain the rest of the night. And, um, you know, obviously swelled up a little bit and had some discomfort this morning. So we decided to hold him out. Okay, guys, there's Frank Vogel. So you heard it. Kyle Kuzma in the starting lineup in his hometown uh, of Detroit, or at least just outside of Detroit where he's from Flint. And then expect to see that 10-man rotation alley with the second unit. You mentioned THT. You get some more minutes for Morris, some more for Crusoe.